Well, welcome to another Life with the Lionesses from the Women in Rugby League series. I am absolutely thrilled to invite uh, an old mucker, someone who I've known for far too long in the history of the game. We've just been discussing that it's far too long and far too old, um, who played at Wakefield, but also came along and, and played at Hull as well, around Hull Dockers, also coaching within the Hull scene and very successful coach and player. Uh, for Rugby League and also did the tours on 1998, 2000 and 2002 and a bit of a legend in, in Women's Rugby League. Welcome, Teresa Bruce. Uh, hiya, Julie. You're all right? I am all right. A lot of people have said, oh, that Teresa Bruce, that team, we remember her. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, so how did you get involved in Rugby League? Um, do you know something, Kick? It all stems from a colleague that I worked with at Cast Swimming Pool, uh, Neil Schofield. I'll never forget this. I played hockey and I got bored of it, as you can imagine. Um, and I said to Neil, I fancy doing something different, isn't it? And I didn't fancy football, even though I grew up with loads of lads and, you know, a bit tomboyish, well, a lot tomboyish, to be fair. I just didn't fancy playing football. And he said, what about rugby? And I went, you what? He said, rugby. I says, oh, is the rugby match? I says, yeah, I think it, there's two teams around here. There was Red Hill and mm -hmm. Wakefield. And I says, all right. And he got me a snippet of um, Red Hills and Wakefield's um, coaches and who to contact. So I, I was ringing both numbers. And do you know something? It's a bit ironic because I think the phone number for Red Hill was out when she changed her number. So I couldn't get in touch with that lady. So I ended up ringing, uh, I think it was Jackie. And Jackie says, come down. So I came down, um, did a bit of training, and it, uh, it was just before the win on tour in '96. And um, I, I was a bit of a chunky malunky, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think Bren saw me for the first time. She said, oh, you'll be good at uh, second row prop. So I thought, all right, yeah, okay, then not. not. Um, so when they went on tour, there was, I think, there was me, me Sue H, Kirsty Robinson, and I think Sam Wood. And for the whole time they were on tour, Sue kicked my butt up and down them bloody hills at back at Featherston Sports Centre. And I ended up buying a bike, push bike into bloody work and um, from Barnsley, because I lived in Barnsley at that time. And I lost that much weight, I ended up being a wink. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But I don't think, when Brent, they came back from tour, they didn't recognise me because Sue was absolutely relentless. Um, I'll never forget it. Going up and down then bloody hills and doing sit-ups halfway up nil. Um, but yeah, yeah, she, I came back, they came back and ended up going on the wing. So Bren had to show me how to be a winger, when to come inside and when to stay out. Um, but yeah, so that's how it all started, really. So your family were really rugby league? Yeah, my dad, Wakefield, uh, very much. Uh, my dad used to take me to watch Wakefield a lot. Um, I still go now. I'm very much an avid Wakefield fan. I'm, I was like biting my fingernails this year because I thought they were going to go down. Um, oh, I know that being a whole KR fan. Oh, <laughs> you know, but I, it, right when I was on the wall, I could see it with Wakefield. I thought, oh man, um, I'm glad to change the coach. <laughs> uh, but yeah, massive Wakefield fan. Um, through my dad, really. I think my dad was just going to have trials with him, but he ended up having a motorbike accident. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely a rugby league through and through, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't foreign to you at all. You knew, you know, you knew about it. And, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah. And I think when I went to college as well, I had a, a few friends like um, Darren Rogers. I went to college with Darren and he ended up playing for England. Yeah. And I'm still in contact with Darren. Um, so, you know, rugby league has been part of my life, really, since we were young. Uh, not football, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you play any... So you played uh, in the Great Wakefield days then, weren't you? When yeah, yeah, yeah. When uh, they were yeah, quite uh, unbeaten? Yeah, I was in that team that got beat by Barrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, oh, it was really bizarre because the amount of phone calls Bryn got that day to see if she was all right. <laughs> yeah, because we hadn't been beaten for About years. About eight years, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know something... It probably did as world of good, to be fair, mm. um, because we had to reach new levels and scale new heights because Bradford were on us cut tails. Um, I think Red Hill were just slowly, I think they um, folded a little bit towards the end, but it was definitely Bradford, I think, Hindley were coming through. Um, and obviously Barrow, they beat us. Um, but to be fair, with the calibre of players they had, Especially Flojo, I remember my job was to mark her all the time. She was on the wing, and Brent kept saying to me, "Just don't get her, don't let her get on outside of you." 
so yeah, I think my job for the first four years was just marking her. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, because they had six Great Britain internationals as mm. well. They were yeah. really, really yeah. good team, really good team. And um, to be fair, I think she, Flo was initially the person that I looked to and I wanted to epitomise because she was a fantastic player. Yeah. Really was. Yeah. Um, just the speed and strength as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was, and, and she was quite humble off the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, lovely lady. Yeah, yeah, oh, lovely. We can't get in touch with her yet. She's not replying to me, so I hope she does get involved because, uh, yeah, yeah, as you know, yeah. she was a formidable player, wasn't she? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's some, been some ones down the line. Um, like uh, Shelley Lang, she sticks out a mile for yeah. me, and Mandy Green. Um, them two, you know, the rivalry between, you know, the hooker position, mm. but they were fantastic players. Uh, yeah. Shelley, how she went around and marshaled it. Wakefield so many years her and Bren just had it to a tea to be fair yeah absolutely I've just interviewed Michelle actually Shelley and mm. her memory is fantastic as mm. well she can remember all the different games and things like that and uh she was she was like the little general once she really she was and do you know something Julia I think if she had been fit in 2000 uh, until the Australian talk she did an Ian didn't she yeah she did I think yeah. we'd have won that yeah uh, she's such, such a crucial player the other thing is her resilience, because I mean, she mm. t- two two cruciate ligaments mm. is just in anyone's career is just devastating, isn't it? But the first one she came back from, and then yeah. then did it again, didn't she? In two thousand and two, yeah. but then Absolutely. then came back to play. Maybe not international, but she still came back to play. Oh yeah, she? yeah, yeah. She's hardcore that last. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you play any county rugby then? Yeah, I think. I, I, yeah, I did. I played for Yorkshire. And I think that rule came in, didn't it? If you played for Great Britain, you weren't allowed to play for Yorkshire. But ah, I think that's beforehand, right. yeah, I played for Yorkshire. Um, and that's, I think, uh, a couple of times we played, to be fair. But I also played for the Wildcats teams as well, you know. Um, so I did, wait, I went through the ranks, really. I went for Wakefield, um, Yorkshire, Wildcats and Great Britain team. So, yeah, I, did, I think I did a full sweep, to be fair. You did, didn't you, by the sound mm-hmm. of it? You've got, uh-huh. you've got everything in your bag, full house. <laughs> <laughs> So, can you remember much about um, going and get be getting selected for Great Britain then? I think I'd only been playing a couple of months. I think um, they were picking um, the next tour, the next squad. A couple of months after coming back from the Australian tour, um, and I think it was about Christmas time. I started playing in the August about Christmas time. I think Jackie pulled me to one side and said, "We want to invite you." Um, and I think it was after one of coaching sessions because I was playing. With Jackie, she was my centre uh, still, and she just said, "I like, would like to invite you." And I, I would just, I couldn't believe it to be fair. And um, my mum couldn't, especially. I think uh, she remember. I remember coming home from one of the tours, and she took a picture of teletext. Like mother, for God's sake! <laughs> yeah, she says, "Oh, I'm so proud." Uh, oh, yeah, how lovely! Yeah, it, I know it's like your own recognition, but to me, you know, making my mum and dad proud. That's that's what gets you most. Oh, uh, that's yeah, lovely. Yeah, um, I remember driving all the way. I think it was—is it the Dorothy Hyman Centre? Yeah, Barnsley. Barnsley. Yeah, yeah. We had to drive all the way over to there and do that training for the New Zealand tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah so oh, how pr- oh, how lovely. Do you know I love stories like that because it just shows how important it is, isn't it, to actually mm. at the time for all of you women. So, what was the training like then? Hard. Hard. Um, I think, Even harder than uh, you'd done with Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it would. I think the hardest training that I did was with Bren. I, I'll be honest with you. She pushed you to different levels, and the fitter you got, the more you, you ended up paired with her. And I remember that girl was saying, "Slow down, she's because you're going to end up training with Bren." I went, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, but she was a bugger because she could always. She goes, "You're training with me." I thought, oh man. So, and because of the competitive nature of it, you got to give hundred percent, and um, obviously she just pushed you to new levels. But then, obviously, with the Great Britain, I think it was different because you had to do, obviously get more involved in the gym and do weight sessions. I remember Simon was not doing his programs, doing the weight. So, trying to combine it with a full time job, and um, I was training to be a teacher and stuff. Um, and obviously, obviously, with the wakeful training, it, it was exhausting. It was, I must admit. But I did lose some weight, that is for sure. Yeah, yeah. Did it take over your life then? Yeah, yeah, massively. Um, I think you, you just you just sleep, eat and 
dream about uh, rugby. And you know, I think that's where it got to the point where I had to sit down and think, right, okay. I'm working, I worked for FC, so I was surrounded by it from that, that perspective. Um, I was training to be a teacher. Uh, we're coaching the, uh, the women's team. And, you know, at some point you do get to a breaking point. And yeah. I had to step back a little bit um, and think about, okay, you know, the kids aren't getting any younger. My career, I've got to think about my career um, and moving forward. Uh, but yeah, it did. It did take over your life. Um, I remember planning my lessons at school and doing coaching sessions at the same time, and thinking, "Oh God." Yeah, yeah. Um, I can imagine you get a bit of rugby fatigue. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I retired at the same uh, at the right time. I, I similar to when we talked about Shelley's cruise year, Um I did the same on my knee, and I was just about to tour Uganda because I was going on a tag rugby, you know, to support with, uh, with charity out there, and. I ripped an all in my knee, uh, playing against Wakefield, actually. It was all against Wakefield. And the week week after that, I was going to Uganda. Um, so I think that really, I thought, once you start damaging your joints to that yeah. to that significant level, then it's time to hang it up a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah it's but it's back a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to get, it took its toll, the injuries that you've had and I've had, and just waking up and rolling out of bed that Monday morning. I used to go to work and mate John used to pick my arms up, lift my arms up and, and I used to go, no, no, no. And I, he goes, how high? And trying to lift my arms up. And you just couldn't lift it off your wall and oh, the bruises and how battered you were. I must uh, admit, I did, I did take some wax off people. Yeah, yeah. Probably well, you were strong, deserved. weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you were a strong runner, weren't you? You're the one yeah. that they had to watch. Yeah, well, hopefully I've tried to run around him, but sometimes I did get smashed a few times. I think I can recollect from first... First game, I got absolutely walloped by uh, Gail Johansson and that Jan, the lady from Jan, we played against Old Vixens, yeah, yeah. and they smashed me. Absolutely smashed me. I think I couldn't drive home. I was sick. I had a bit wow. of concussion. Yeah, I'd only just passed the driving it. test as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the proper oh. give me a right belt. Yeah. Um, I just ran for the line. And they just put me put me on my backside. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so you were doing all the club training, all the Great mm-hmm. Britain. So what was it like when you got selected for that first tour in 1998? Oh, it, it's unbelievable, isn't it? The, the opportunity that you have to play for you, your country for playing for Great Britain. You know, it, it, I, I'm just, I feel I'm very fortunate. And I think it's uh, this programme, especially, and you going back through the times and reminiscing and thinking, God, do you know, I've done that. I've actually done that. I've toured New Zealand, um, sat in them hot tub, late things in Rotorua, um, ironed the God knows how many T-shirts. But it's proud as punch when you sit back and reflect and realise just how far you've got with your, your uh, sporting careers. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable, yeah. Um, I'm just proud. I'm proud for my mum, really. Um, yeah, and yours was, yours was pretty significant because, I mean, three tours, wasn't it? So yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the um, the two, Australia in 2002 and uh, that one, um, I did all right with that one. Um, I came away like the Australians voted me player of the series and I got player at first match by them as well. So I think around that time I started finding my feet a little bit because um, uh, I did pretty well, got player at series, uh, player at season as well. And, yeah, yeah, so a good it, season all round. Yeah, it were about that time, yeah. Um, I think about 27, 28 years old, I think, after about six, seven years, figuring out how it all works and fitting in and, you know, fitting in your career and your uh, rugby. Um, it just started to gel within a couple of years around the, between 2000 and 2003. It just seemed to just all pull together at that time. Yeah. But yeah, it's one of the proudest things ever, you know, when um, the Australian one where you started to get your names on the back. And man said Bruce won, you know, there's nothing better, is there, really? No, no absolutely. No. Absolutely. And you worked hard for it because you had to train hard, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had to drive all over the country to train as well because yeah. it had to be, it had to be uh, proportionate because of all the people that were travelling from different places in the country. We couldn't all be based in Yorkshire because there was some Yorkshire base. We had to travel. So I remember travelling over side, going up to Warrington and training. Um, and having these weekends away and and having to put time in at work because all the world in the world, you know, work's not going to continuously pay you. So, you know, getting the time off work, you know, um, 
go on without pay as well because they can't pay you forever if you're not at work, can you? So, yeah, yeah the sacrifices that I had to be done, it, it wasn't real, really. When I think yeah, about yeah. it now, the fundraising in particular um, grates me a little bit, I'll be honest with you. The fact that we have to raise money to go play for your country, I just find really bizarre, um, especially when the men didn't have to do it, but that's another aspect. No, absolutely, and I think, yeah. it's, a re- and I think it's something you can't hide from, that that's yeah, what you yeah. all had to do and the commitment you had to do. Uh, and it's really come out of everyone, uh, you know, talking about it. You know, they... I remember. I don't know whether it, if it's true or a myth or a, actually, but I'm walking around in ninety, pair, 90 pound pair of shoes. I never forget that. I'm wearing like snooping and scraping, and, and because of them, I was with Wakefield, and there's, there were quite a few from Wakefield going to um, on the Great Britain tours. It was really hard to raise money because you were hitting the same people all the time. Mm-hmm. I was a little bit fortunate because uh, when I worked at Cass Swim Pool. Cast Tigers used to come in all the time, and Darren, who obviously Darren uh, Rogers, that I mentioned, he were playing for Cass, um, and I got a lot of donations from them. Um, but I did that with Hull, Hull FC. They donated loads of stuff from me from the tour. Um, they did the tag rugby at Uganda. So the Super League clubs have supported me. It's been really good for me. But yeah, it does does great on you a little bit when you sat in. Uh, I was in Sydney when we were so got. I'm at 84 nil or something like that. And we all sat there in his Great Britain tops. I think, we, I think all of us could have just, you know, wished that the ground had swallowed us all up. The amount of Bruce that we got walking out of that stadium was unreal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? That And how it's evolving now, you know, yeah. around it. But you all worked so hard. And and as you described, juggling your, your life, you know, your career, because you knew you mm-hmm. had to have a career. Uh, and a very successful career um but also you knew your rugby wouldn't last forever and actually you weren't getting paid for it so i, know, I, know. I yeah. remember the, these blogs coming around out of training asking if we wanted insurance <laughs> 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 yeah some insurance for playing <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. We, we we didn't get paid you know what i mean we didn't get paid and if you had time of work and you, i worked for council but only the council will pay for so long if you mm. had time of work so yeah, um, it did it, it the pocket, I must admit. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like that first tour in '98 playing the Kiwis? Hard. They were the the size of them. I thought I was big, and because I played on winger, I was quite big for a winger and centre, but they were all bigger than me. I thought bloody hell, and they were they were fast, hard, and really, really strong. It was a wake up call, I think. I think well, especially to me. Uh, seeing the size of them and seeing how energetic and uh, the level that they had, they seemed to be on a different level to us at that, in that tour. Um, and I, th- I think we just came in, I think we got battered, to be honest with you. Um, some of the games were close, don't get me wrong, and we did really well in the local games. Mm. Um, but when it came to the series, they just ran away. We, we just couldn't keep up with them. And they were just so powerful and strong across the board. Um, but... I think I think they they took it initially to a different level from that from that tour, and um, I think we realised that actually we needed to push game and get that more endurance, that more strength because we we had the ability, no doubt about it. Um, but I think it more the um, strengthening that we needed and to be a bit more physical because I think we was a, a little bit nice on the pitch. To be fair, I remember um, the Kiwis poking my eyes out. And I thought, how rude, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, just something that we've never think of, just while they're messing about on floor, poking them in the eye. And I remember getting up and Brent having to go at me. And she says, Teresa, I said, she just poked me in the eyes. <laughs> you threw the ball at her. <laughs> I got the penalty. It's all right, Julia. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just things like that. Just, you know, little niggles like they used to just wind each other players up. We never did all like that. I think we were just so clean and so pure in terms of how we played the sport. But obviously you do little things just to wind the opponents up and it never crossed our minds to do anything mm. like that. But yeah, it give me a good poke in eye. So you had to toughen up then for two Yeah, pounds. it were, it were. That as if to say, you need to add an up. You went to the other side of the country getting battered. You need to, to add an up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it like then in 2000 having a home, home fixture? Oh, um, which is now, brilliant. by the way, the first World Cup, which is fantastic. So you played in the first oh. World Cup, which is pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I've got mixed feeling mild. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, brilliant. I, I remember, you know, we touched on it before, it's like the floods in Hull. Uh, we had to change it, uh, the game from the boulevard, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. And played at Dewsbury. Um, yeah. And Oral, we trained at Oral, didn't we? Um, but yeah, that did really, really well. Um, we get to that final, and we actually closed the gap against New Zealand. And yeah. uh, I was in that semi final match where we beat them 4-0. I think Bren got two penalties at yeah. Castleford. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, it, it was absolutely brilliant having it on your own soil uh, and the amount of support that you got from families, friends, from my work colleagues uh, that came down and watched and supported me and also like travelling, they travelled and followed you around. I remember that I think the mayor from Hull actually went up to, because the game should have been a Hull, actually went up to um, was Oral where we oh. played it instead. Um, but yeah, the support was unreal, and I think wasn't it Phil Clark as well? Did he sponsor? Yeah, it? he sponsored it. Phil Clark. Yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Com. yeah, yeah. I remember that. Some nice gear as well. Really oh, nice yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time when we went to uh, New Zealand, we had these horrible bitty shorts and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, there was um, one yeah. tour where they were all see-through the shorts. Yeah, that, I think that was Australia. And if you remember, I think Jackie sent us to, to, to shop to go get some different shorts. There were white <laughs> ones, weren't there? Yeah. Yeah, and um, came up with blue. I remember that. I went to go shopping. <laughs> Men didn't have to do that, did they? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you did really well in that 2000 because you got runners-up. Mm. And as you say, closed the gap. And actually, everyone could see the change yeah. that you, you know, you'd made in, in competition-wise and still beating the Aussies. Yeah, we, yeah, we beat them um, in close games, like I say, but we did beat the Australians. But you could tell, I think the introduction of Simon, bringing it in and the weights and the going to the gym, and she, he commented on people's body shapes changing because of the amount of uh, time that we were spending in the gym. We were all, like, in effect, trying to bulk up. But mm. keep, you know, keep speed. But that extra strength that we didn't necessarily have before. Um, but yeah, we did. I think it was only 20, 24, something like that. 20 points to four, like when we lost. Yeah. I think, yeah, a lot closer. I know it doesn't yeah. possibly don't seem it on paper, but it was a lot closer game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I was proud to be in that, involved in that, in that, in that uh, last two games, yeah, semi final yeah. and the final. Yeah, and absolutely, they were, they were, and I think the semi-final got in the top five of World Cup games because the mm. men's World Cup was going on uh, as one of the games of the of yeah. the whole events, which is pretty yeah. phenomenal, isn't it? It is, and to say like two penalties, nah, that yeah. were a difference between us, and I'll never forget uh, we nearly scored. I think um, I made a break, and Jackie had always set up that the winger had to come in, take the ball. And the other one you had to support. So I came in, took the ball, and there was Danny on my corner, and I just plucked it out to her. She did nearly a full lemper. We nearly scored, nearly scored a try. Oh, yeah. it. oh mm. gosh. It's weird how what you remember. It things. is. I'll remember that. I always remember that. Yeah. So nearly scored. Yeah. And it's interesting getting you all together because you all have different, you're piecing it together like a jigsaw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then you went out in 2002. Yeah, 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 and the uh, from what you're saying, you know, you actually had a phenomenal tour, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I played well, played, played all right, and I think it was like a bit of the catalyst of all the last couple of years coming together. Um, Jackie put me at full back, um, whereas before I was either a centre or a wing, mm -hmm. and she put me at full back, and um, I think it was about two months before they put me into that position, and they kept doing this uh, this move where I came around the back all the time, and Brent kept putting me through this gap. And I just kept getting through the gap. But I think by the end of uh, second and third test, I caught on to it. It started giving me a good belt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, first, I think first test we took them by surprise because I just kept getting through all the time. Um, passing on to like Paul, I think Paul scored the first try. Um, but yeah, it worked really good partnership that um, me coming through coming through the gap. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So great. I think it was like that hook, line, and sinker. I think it were, and I think I was the sinker or something that came around the back. Sinker come in. Yeah. In the yeah. And when you think about it, all that you sort of, you know, your competitive nature. How has it held you instead for your career, really, and what you've done? Because you've been really <laughs> successful, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think I've kind of commented on this. I think a lot of people at work have picked up on the fact that I played competitively. Um, and there was a little comment from my colleague on Friday because I just want to get things done. I just want to get it done right. Um, it's got to be at the right standard. Um, and I just don't, 
allow for second best. You just push yourself all the time. And um, so it was really ironic. Somebody came, a, a young PCO came, and came to speak to me and asked me about my career and stuff and said, what do you do? How do you deal with failure? I looked at it and I thought, I'm failed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fail, you just push on to go to a different level. Mm-hmm. It's not about failure, is it? It's like, right, okay, I've done it at that level. Let's push on now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's made a difference. Um, I think as well, realising that you need to build, have a really, really solid foundation in terms of a team around you, because you can't do it all yourself. No, you know, and that's the teamwork being pushed into you, you know, um, from playing at Wakefield. Uh, the team spirit that we had uh, was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. When I think about, like, Lucy Ferguson, I'll never forget this, play that final at uh, Dewsbury, and she broke both her wrists. I think she, oh, she broke her uh, thumb and potted on one hand and broke her wrist on the other hand. And she played the game and had to come off and she came out with two pots. And I just thought, oh my God, that last. Uh, but it's just what we did. It's just what you did for each other and the team spirit, like I say, um, was absolutely unreal. But saying that, we're saying we hope that I'll never forget that time when uh, we actually won. But I think it, we were playing and I think Maria kicked the ball and Maria picked it up and scored against Casper. I think it's first game full had won. And do you know the you know the pride, you know, people jumping up in the air because they'd won a game. Uh, but that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about winning and scoring tries. Yeah. And teamwork. Yeah. And teamwork, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, done, teamwork. it's done brilliant for my career to be fair. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you you sort of you did you you trained to be the teaching, didn't you? And then you went to work at Hull FC, and then you're sort of now in the prison service, are you really? You yeah, know, yeah. Senior. I went, yeah, I went to Hull FC, um, and that's when towards back into my career, um, and I got on to more coaching. And John Keir, who was coach at Hull FC, is when they won the Challenge Cup. He, he used to sit with me and talk through tactics of the team to the team. So if you think about, I had Bren. It was a coach, it was a phenomenal coach, phenomenal player. And then I had John Keir, then I had like, like Steve Crooks and Mel Harmons, who were legends in Hull. They were showing me all different tactics. And when John moved on and Pete Sharp, he did the same. They were, the amount of support that I got from Hull FC, especially uh, with the women's game, was unreal. Uh, yeah, so I went, did that, went into teaching. Um, somebody thought I was good with kids and, you know, I could teach kids. So I uh, went into teaching, went through the ranks of teaching and I went into prison education then I worked directly for the prison now and got to uh, assistant director level so yeah yeah doing all right British, you have done all right you've done brilliant haven't you really <laughs> done all right yeah. you've done not yeah. all right you've done bloody brilliant my mum's happy <laughs> your mum's happy that's all that matters she's still yeah, taking yeah. pictures of teletext <laughs> Bless her. Love yeah oh, do you know oh, it's really bizarre because I got an award last year and she took pictures of that and no oh. <laughs> Uh, I got my little trophy and stuff like that. Cheers. Uh, if you can make your parents proud, that's all you need to do, really. It, it is. It's big, that, isn't it? And, yeah. you know, whatever you've done, you, as you say, you've been successful because also your coaching career, you were really successful as well, weren't you, at West Hall? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think one of the highlights, you know, you can talk about personal achievements, but um, Hull beating Wakefield, and I should, like, I'm, even though I'm a Wakefield player, um, I think we went through the season of beating every team. And we got to the finals, and it's never heard of with Hull. Um, I remember Anne Thompson watching us against Wakefield, and she says, I'm so proud of you all. I'm so proud of you all. Because she started it all off, didn't she, really, for Hull? Yeah, she did. And, oh, yeah, know, she did, yeah. Yeah, I saw her a couple of weeks back, um, uh, and she's looking really, really well. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, but, yeah, just managing to coach um, these whole women, and we had a really, really good team. We had like uh, we had someone called Sophie Lazenby. She came from the women's uh, England rugby union, and she said to me, "She says I can't believe how fit you need to be because she's used to getting back on side like we in a meter. She mm. getting up off the floor and getting back to him all the time. She says I can't believe how fit." Um, and we had Maria, we had Vicky Cooney, do you know, um, and obviously we had Luke Young Nat who passed away last year, unfortunately. Mm. But we had uh, Hannah, all these young kids coming through. Uh, Bowman, she 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 was like absolutely, you know, powerful. She would, reminded me a young version of Flo, uh, mm-hmm. Kayla Bowman. She was fantastic, and yeah, obviously Jacko, um, who was really elusive, um, really really good player. 
Um, but we had a really, really, really strong team. Um, and we had obviously characters of Shaz, not Vicky Buckle, um, who, you know, who was quite unique in her character. But yeah, we had a, yeah. a fantastic team and be able to coach them to be every team in the league, including Wakefield. You know, I was really, quite proud of that, really proud of it. Yeah, and so you should have actually, when you look at Hull and the work that Anne did, that you mm. mentioned, because she did set up sort of Hull Vixens initially mm. and, and has had a long history of coaching in rugby league and yeah. before her time in coaching, because she brought in the psychological elements. Yeah, she did, yeah. The training mm. for Great Britain and um, and she worked really hard at that. Unfortunately, never toured, but she because she um, didn't want to, she, she struggled with the travel, but she's been phenomenal in the whole scene. And when you look at the number of internationals, women's mm. internationals, so the Great Britain, um, I've, I've totted up 11 for Great Britain. Mm. Um, I'm still working at the England to find out, but there must be another half a dozen that have played for Great Britain that are sort of all whole born and bred, just shows where yeah. the league's been at, doesn't it? Do you know, it is, it's a real, you know, like, this area, the competitiveness between OKR and LFC, I've never known it, the hotbed of rugby. Um, I'm quite pragmatic, pragmatic in terms of when I think about LFC and OKR, and I used to say, well, I don't understand why would you want to get each other relegated? Because if you get relegated, you can't play each other, which means you can't generate your income. And I used to think of it like that. They went, no, we can't stand them. We want them to get relegated, we want them to lose. I'm like, it don't make sense. <laughs> It's not insane league. You can't get the amount. You would rather go play someone in back, uh, Queen Cumbria that you, you know cost thousands of pounds rather than play all FC. That all you know you generate thousands of pounds. It makes sense to me, but they did. They hate each other. Absolutely hate you, each other. It uh, is definitely but, different, isn't it? <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I'm from Wakefield. I just stand there and go, oh, well, I spot Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Teresa, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much for sharing no your problem. memories. I could talk for hours, actually. You've got yeah. so much to give and you've got such a phenomenal uh, career in rugby league mm. um, and obviously carrying it on in sort of your workplace, your tenacity mm. uh, and everything like that. Thank you for being involved and thank and you, thank you for sharing me. your memories. No problem. Thank you, Julie.